Systems administration in the real world is all about problem solving and troubleshooting and staying on your toes because anything can happen at any moment. Systems crash, applications slow down, users need assistance. So in this nugget, we're going to look at the tools and techniques used to monitor and troubleshoot your systems. And we'll do so against a real network. We're going to be playing with a small three machine Microsoft Windows Server based network. We have three machines. We have admin nug, which is what we're going to be using here as our administration console. In the real world, oftentimes you will be using your PC to remotely manage, administer, troubleshoot, and monitor servers. In fact, FileNug, our file server here, is a machine that you don't really get on to configure because it's a command line only version of Windows Server known as Server Core. Now this file server exposes a handful of file shares that we can utilize from the network. And what we're going to do here is create some sample files here, some backups we'll say, on admin nug and we'll make them big we'll make a one gigabyte a five gigabyte and a 10 gigabyte file and we'll copy those over to those file shares all the while using a performance monitoring tool to watch all of those critical resources such as memory disk cpu and network we also have dc nug down here we're not actually going to be using this but we do have it in this network because dc stands for domain controller and it's running active directory domain services Think of this as the glue that ties all of these machines, our user accounts, and everything together. And by the way, Microsoft shops rely on their system administrators to install, configure, and manage Active Directory. All right, let's get to it. Here we are on Admin Nug. And the first thing I want to do is show you one of the primary tools you'll be using to remotely manage all the servers in a Windows-based network. That tool is called Server Manager. What a great name, huh? Exactly what we use it for to manage servers. Up here on the right, we have a tools menu, which shows us all of the administrative tools, a nice easy way to access all of them. I'll show you a couple of those here in a little bit. And on the left, we have a navigation here. We can hit local server to manage this machine and get a lot of good information about this machine. We can hit all servers to see all the machines in our network. So for example here, if I hit admin nug, we're looking at our local server here. If I hit DC nug, we're looking at our domain controller. We can see the events generated on that machine, the services it exposes. If we scroll down a little further here, we can monitor performance remotely, and we have the roles and features installed. You can see there's ADDS, Active Directory Domain Services. If we scroll back up to the top, top here and choose our file server and scroll down, now all this information is coming from that file server. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, we can see that I have installed the file server role so we can create shares and expose files to the network living on that server. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's take a closer look at FileNug. I'm gonna minimize Server Manager and bring up File Explorer. Let's browse the network by doing a whack whack file dash nug, the name of the machine. Once I hit enter, it's gonna show us all of the shares that are living on that machine. And I did throw a file in here. There's file.txt there and software, there's util.exe and we have nothing in backups. So what we're gonna do again here is generate some files, copy them over to this and monitor that progress using a performance monitoring tool. Let's begin by firing up that tool. I'm gonna head back into server manager, drop down the tools menu. And what we're looking for here is a tool called performance monitor. So we'll fire that up. I'll minimize server manager in the background here. And this is a, such a great tool because it allows us to monitor performance in real time, even of remote servers. Now, by default, this tool hooks into the local machine, admin nug, and we want to monitor our remote machine, file nug, and do so in real time. So what we're going to do is drop down the monitoring tools node and choose performance monitor. This will show us in real time whatever metrics we add into this view. And we can add those metrics by hitting the plus sign, and then we need to specify what machine we want to monitor. So if we hit file nug here and hit enter, this is going to pull back all of these what are known as counters, think of them as metrics, that we can then add into that view. Let's start with our processor here. If we drop this down, I'm going to choose just one metric here. How about processor time? And you can also hit show description here to view a description of what these metrics do. This one is a great indicator of processor activity. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to choose total, which will give us an aggregate of all the CPUs on that machine. There's four of them activity. We'll add that in and we can see that targeting the processor time over on file nug. Let's add another one in here. I'm going to scroll up a little bit here until we see memory. There it is. And let's grab, how about our total available megabytes on that system? That'll show us that at any given moment. All right, let's also add another one in here. How about logical disk right above it? 
let's grab the disk percentage of write time and we'll grab the total here and that will show us our disk activity when it comes to writes. We're gonna be sending those files over to that chair so we should generate a good amount of write activity. Let's add one more in here. How about our network here? So if we head down here to network adapter, we'll grab how about the bytes received per second for the network adapter on this network. All right, so we've got a bunch of metrics in here. If we hit okay, that'll add them all into this view and start tracking them. Again, our default view here is a line chart, but we can drop this down get, to get a histogram bar and any metric you choose, we can see the values here within. So we can see there's not a lot of write activity going on right now. There's four gigs of total memory on that file server. It looks like there's uh, 3,500 megabytes available to us. Here's our network, bytes received, and our processor time. Very quiet over on that machine, not much going on. We can also drop this down and choose report to get the actual values in real time. All right, so I got us all set up here. We have our performance monitor on the left. We've got a directory on our local machine here called Nugget Lab in the C drive up top on the right. And on the bottom right, we have our share over on FileNut. So we're going to generate some test files here on this machine in this directory and then copy them over to this directory and watch all of these numbers and that graph light up. So our next step is to generate those test files that we'll be copying over the network. And I'm going to show you a really nice tool, command line tool, that's built into the Windows Server operating system. The first thing we need to do is get a command prompt up. So I'm going to right click on the start menu, head up to command prompt, launch this under administrative credentials. And that tool is called FSUtil. We'll do an FSUtil, file, create new, specify the path to that file, C colon backslash nugget lab. Let's call this one, how about data? Dot back, simulating a backup file. And then we just need to specify a size. I'm going to enter in one gigabyte. And you can see the tool is a little bit archaic because we have to enter it in in bytes. So that's one gigabyte in bytes. And if we hit enter here, it's going to create it and we should see it pop up over here in our Nugget Lab directory. And it is fairly large. Let's do another one here and make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to recall my last command, add a zero onto the end of that. So that'll make it 10 gigabytes rather than one gigabyte. And we'll change the name here to file.back. That'll create another one even bigger. How about one more? I'm going to recall my last command and let's make this one five gigabytes. So half of that number right there, which is what? Five, three, six, eight, seven, zero, nine, one, two, zero. Something like that. That should be close to five gigs. And then let's call this one. How about stuff because everybody needs a file called stuff there we go that'll create that and now we have 16 gigabytes worth of files here on our local machine we're ready to perform the copy are you ready for this keep an eye on these numbers over here i'm going to drag these over to that share and it's going to start that file copy process and look at that while it's copying whoo look at our writes going through the roof our megabytes uh, that are available have dropped down and look at all the bytes that are getting received over there on FileNug and look at that processor churn away. And as soon as this process is done and those files are copied over, you'll see all those go back to normal levels. And look at that, that machine is no longer stressed out. All of those resources are back to idle levels. We can also drop this down and choose to take a look at our line chart now and look at all those squigglies. We can monitor this in real time as well as over time. So this is one of the primary tools that you'll be using to monitor the performance of your servers and it'll help give you insight into what resources you may need more of. Another invaluable real world tool you'll be using to troubleshoot all issues, not just performance related issues, is the event viewer, which collects all of the logs across the system, security, application, and everything else running on a Windows server. We can access this through Server Manager by dropping down the Tools menu and launching Event Viewer. If you have a server in your environment that isn't quite acting right, this is one of the first tools you'll get into to isolate and identify the problem. This is essentially a log viewer, except that it collects logs for all the applications and services on a Windows system. We have Windows logs here, which contain entries for applications. We have a security log, contains security entries here, setup, system. And if we expand applications and services here, we can also expand Microsoft, Windows, and we have logs for every single service feature and role here in a Windows environment. And yes, we can even hook this up to our remote machines. If I scroll all the way back up to the top here, we can right click on the event viewer node and I can enter in the name of that remote machine, file nug, and now we're connected to it and we can view the logs over on that machine. So this is the tool that you'll use in your workflow will look something like this. You will isolate, identify, reproduce, 
and then fix the issue. Well, that was fun and a great real world exercise. The more tools and skills you have in your toolbox, the better equipped you will be for that moment. And believe me, that moment will come when you get that call. All of our systems are down. Uh Uh-oh, what do you do? You stay calm, you grab your toolbox, you grab your process, and you isolate, identify, troubleshoot, and fix. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.